Hard times create strong people, heroes even, and James Scholes is one of them. I hope I'm saying that right, James Scholes. You get one syllable wrong, you're into dangerous territory. James Scholes is smashing it at the moment. 12 hour study days every day, the channel is blowing up, and there's no doubt that he's been a huge inspiration for many of us over the past 12 months. But I do worry for him a bit. If you're going through school or university and you're aiming to be successful one day with your family of your own, then I think there are two things that we should think about and be very careful of. Now, I'm not going to say anything like, oh, you shouldn't study 12 hours a day. Oh, you should be out just enjoying your youth, things like that. I'm not going to be saying that. And the reason is James is a man who's made a decision and I'm not going to patronise him by telling him how to live his life. Now, my personal concerns come from a different place, uh, and it all starts with his, his one of his main goals, which is to help and inspire others. Now, as he rightly points out, online school isn't fun, and I think for over the past 12 months, a lot of students have lost that spark, lost that drive, and he's helped them reignite it with his his own burning drive to go and succeed and excel as a computer engineer to be better than the next person and the way he goes about doing that with his routine it's quite extreme uh, in his own words abnormal up at 3 a.m study at 4 sometimes studying up to 12 hours at a time and then after that i think he was training for a marathon as well until it got cancelled um, and then all of that before lights out at half seven now, to establish and maintain this routine successfully over the course of a year and beyond takes a really strong why. And James's why doesn't get any stronger than wanting to buy his own mum a house and obviously at the same time help and inspire others. He's clearly seen this situation as an opportunity to do something extraordinary, to really give his best. And I love that mindset. I really admire it. His upbringing was tough and I feel like this has had a strong influence on forming his personal drive. If you grow up with a single mum, you'll know it's very intense and there's a lot of pressure on your mum's side to maintain a living and to support you during your formative years. There's a lot of uncertainty and strain and there's a lot of stress on our mums and it can be heartbreaking to see it get to them at times. And while you're young, you learn that your parents are indeed human and they do have their limits. And this fosters an indirect inclination within us to support them and care for them, even when we're still dependent ourselves. So through this pain comes the altruism to improve the lives of others and to give back to those that have supported us. And there's no one more deserving than our own mothers with this. Through James's great pain has come this relentless drive to push himself and to excel. But my concern is, is that he's not going to burn out, but instead he's going to seek to constantly fill that hole in his heart with more extremity, something more intense that gets harder and harder each time. It's a really satisfying feeling pushing ourselves. And over the past 12 months, we can see that James has really turned up the intensity. But once we leave the university bubble, where do we then find that same fulfillment? Where does the fight continue? Now, obviously, as he's studying to become a computer engineer, the learning will always continue. There's always something to work on. But if we're going to continue these 12 hour study or work days beyond university, then when do we get to a point where we're so used to that intensity that it just stops feeling like it's enough? You get to a point where you feel like I'm not doing enough anymore. I need to push myself harder. I need to push harder to appease the appetite of my own drive. And I can see he's looking at challenging marathons as well. And I can see that there's a, a sort of slippery slope here because, well, as you'll see in another video I did, when I got out of uni, I found this great frustration uh, once the fight of university was over, once exams climaxed and once everything all came to an end, the silence of having nothing to do was absolutely deafening. And I couldn't live with that tranquility. I needed the fight back again. Losing that fight created a void which I needed to constantly fill with extremity, with pushing myself, with feeling like I was really getting the most out of myself. And that all comes from a really intrinsic pressure within us. Another really important aspect is how do we value our contribution to others? Now, while we get fulfillment in the process of what we do, there's also a great feeling of value when we help others. And from there, a similar pattern arises where, yeah, the comments and the appreciation appreciation from people it feels great but then it gets to the point where we start thinking how can I go further how can I do more for people which is good however what isn't good is when we start thinking I'm not doing enough I need to be better for people I need to do more for people 
And the more we pour our efforts into this intrinsic pressure to help people, the less we address our own void, our own problems, our own lack of personal fulfillment in some areas. There's nothing wrong with striving to help others, it's an immensely noble feat. But if we place too much value on the external targets of our efforts to the point where we even start to feel responsibility for helping other people's problems, then that's when we start to leave our own wounds unattended. And when we try to fix ourselves through fixing others, it doesn't address the focal point. And personally, I believe that we can help others best when we are feeling the best ourselves. So not just for James, but for all of us that are striving towards something right now, it's worth asking ourselves, how is this keeping me fulfilled? Is it the thirst for knowledge in our learning, or is it the contentment within the intensity itself? Does this drive me to become more fulfilled in myself, or does the betterment of others solely determine my own contentment and my own well-being? Do you get what I mean? Finally, I just want to talk about the idea and the goal of being a good father, because that's one of James's big goals. And personally, I believe this is one of the most admirable traits for a man. It's uh, people like James help the next generation be better people because he really does care and it's a really pure desire and I really do admire it. But when we do become parents, we should be aware of the example we're going to be setting. When we have kids, are we going to continue this abnormal strive to help others and to really push ourselves to extremes? And if so, is this the kind of lifestyle that we'd want our kids to see as the norm? Would we want to see our kids solely commit themselves to studying 12 hours a day at a time rather than maybe living the more typical teenage lifestyle? We don't know if they're going to have that chip on their shoulder. We don't know where they're going to quite find their fulfillment. Would we want to see them do that to themselves as their parents? And again, I'm not demanding an answer. I'm not demanding justification for anything here. I'm just asking questions that might be worth thinking about. Because the thing is, is there going to be a point where we calm down and we start focusing on simply just being there for our kids, just being a present father, being a present parent because there are parents that have got really good intentions in working long hours to provide the best environment for their kids but they're actually unable to just simply be there for the kids because of those very commitments. If I do become a father one day, I want to make sure that I don't get absorbed in work, that I don't work too long hours to provide the best environment, the more best financial support, more than what's probably just. I don't want to get too absorbed in setting a good example that I forget that at the end of the day, uh, with the limited time that we have on this earth together, uh, to simply just be there for my kids. And that can be just playing video games with them, just going to the park, uh, or just going to football matches with them. I don't want to overlook the little things because of my own big dreams. The thing is, my dad was also quite the hard worker. He used to go to work at 7pm, work all the night, and leave at 7am. Uh, and he did that for 30 years. He did that with both of us knowing that one day he'd retire, and the time for less extremity would eventually come one day. And owing to that, I was very fortunate and very privileged to be financially stable and to have lots of nice things. Uh, and yeah, we did have lots of really nice memories. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I look back and I do wish I had a bit more time with him. But that's a different story. I just thought I'd offer some questions for us as young adults to consider. I hope I didn't sound too harsh or mean in any way. At the end of the day, I think James is a beautiful human being in every sense of the word. And I think to take a bold stand during these difficult times, that in itself makes him exceptional. And I love the stream as well. The aesthetic is outstanding. He's got the old electronics, the rain sounds. He's even got the cat and all. It's this real life version of the lo-fi girl, just as a geezer. He deserves every bit of success that he's getting. And I wish him all the best. And I hope that he achieves his aims. I just hope that he looks after himself along the way. If you found this conversation interesting, then please do subscribe. I'm still trying to find out what kind of content I want to put on this channel. So if you subscribe and hit the like button, then that's a vote for these kind of real and raw conversations. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and have a lovely day. If you found this conversation interesting, then please do subscribe. I'm still trying to find out what kind of content I want to put on this channel. So if you... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs>